hotel and the apartment and the apartment and the apartment and the apartment, roughly 30 acres on this side of the street. Friendship Baptist, which is where the stadium used to be, actually owns 30 acres on that side of the road. And they're planning to build a development in the neighborhood of 350 to 400 million dollars, almost a mini Atlantic station. Along with that stadium, you might imagine in the next two to three years, this road changes into a very different road. And going from Florida to Chicago, right, there's a lot of value in where this place will be. So as an entrepreneur, often location matters. Having access to different types of business ventures really matters. We get upstairs, I'll talk to you more about the verticals we're looking at, but one of the really, really clear drivers for us of being in this location is all of the commerce, all the entrepreneurship is taking place this very street within these very blocks. And so as entrepreneurs, we hope you capitalize on that. And that's part of why the family is dedicating this to the Innovation Entrepreneurship Center. Does that help? Helpful? Okay, so let's get out of the heat and go back inside. If you have questions, ask me along the way if you can. So I'm going to walk you through some areas that aren't in great shape, and so be very careful. There are no nails, or there's nothing that's going to jump out and bite you, but just be careful. But I want to show you in the last 120 days where we've come from and where we're going, okay? Now, another big idea for you is, is that in the next 120 days, everything that you see beyond these walls will be ripped out and demolished. And we're going to take it to what we call a white box level. And we'll be inviting some of you back in to help us envision how we actually build out a particular section. We're beginning to believe that there are opportunities for us to support different verticals, things like sports tech, and health, beauty, and wellness, and food entrepreneurs, and we think these different zones might be customized for those types of verticals and supporting those verticals. Make sense? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to give you a short tour of what the building looks like now, and to show you what this looks like that we've prepped for the kill. But then in a month or two, three months, we'll actually have you back and actually get to show you going into the first quarter of 2017, I completed finished building. Make sense? So we're walking from the original little 5,000 square foot space. As you go down the stairs, this little slope, you'll notice it's a different building that was attached to the building. Okay? So follow me very carefully, and we'll go back and see it. Remember, so I'm going to be very, very quick. Um, for those of you who haven't met, my name is Frank Fernandez. I'm with the Arthur and Blake Family Foundation, and I'm tasked with leading our efforts on the west side. So it's great that the, the Russell family and, and James are opening up this space, which is a great space. I was telling someone I walked it before, and it's already has a lot of changes since the last time I walked it, which is a great thing to see. Um, part of why we're excited about what's happening here is that because it really ties in. A lot of you have been participating in our West Side Economic Inclusion Collaborative, but it really ties into some of the goals that we have as part of that. And we're really focused on at a family level, how do we help with financial well-being? At a business level, how do we help support small businesses, entrepreneurship? How do we tie the economic activity happening on the west side to the broader economy that is happening in Metro Atlanta? And as part of that process, what I think you want to see what will happen here, and I think James is going to detail some of that, that should and can be a real anchor for positive for entrepreneurship and positive economic activity to bring to the area, connect it to the stadium and others and so we're really excited about that and really focus on how do we integrate what will happen here into this broader strategic plan we're trying to finalize over the next few months so i'm like you i'm very excited to learn more thank you Robert. i appreciate it um so maybe do you want to talk about the family's vision we can talk about the pain for sure um so our family's vision of this center is to be basically a, a hub for this community we want something that entrepreneurs of color and really any race can come to and have a home that they can really launch their business. I've been blessed and my family's been blessed with a platform that we've been able to grow and be very successful with. And um, we wanna give that to the rest of our community. So this center is kinda the first step in that. We're hoping this grows into something bigger than just this building. We wanna have the whole north side kinda grow into the hub for, uh, for, business, for entrepreneurship in, this, in the southeast. And this 
painting is kind of representative of everything my grandfather accomplished uh, by Porter. And it, it, he literally did it kind of to show how he started as obviously, you know, a plaster, and he grew his business into food and beverage uh, properties. We had, he had nightclubs, he, has, he built multiple buildings, had a part ownership of the Hawks at one point, and uh, he also owns Conceptions International. So it's just kind of, it really envisions kind of how he had one little dream and he grew it into something so big. And we want to give that to other entrepreneurs that really uh, haven't had the opportunity. So that's really what we're trying to do with this center. And I'm gonna hand it back over to James Thank to talk you. a little bit more about it. I think that's helpful. And I'll, I'll uh, elaborate on what he said, just spend a couple minutes as to why I'm here. I am a serial entrepreneur, and I have to give you that caveat because one of my investors is actually sitting in the, in the room. But. Uh, I was actually mentored by H.J. Russell. There were many times when I, I grew an internet company at King Plow in the early days that we ended up selling for, for a nice exit. And uh, Mr. Russell gave me advice on a uh, many occasion. And so when his family asked me to come in and help them sort of open the doors and get it started, I came in as a, a committed supporter for 30 days. And that 30 days has turned into a, a much larger commitment. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's, uh, it's great work for me. Uh, as an entrepreneur, I feel like it's sort of my life's work. I'm appreciative to have the opportunity. But one of the things that really captured my mind was when I walked upstairs into this room, which is, I call it the trophy room, it's their big conference room. This painting was hanging on the wall, and I don't remember your father, your grandfather's education level was? I graduated from Tuskegee. Graduated from Tuskegee. Very humble and modest man, uh, but decided to build the empire based on being a plasterer. So uh, he grew into this, and the thought was, if we can create more entrepreneurs that can go on to you know, help build the airport and at one time control half the food in the building and build uh, skyscrapers that are iconic in the city of Atlanta, that would be a good thing. And so that's why I'm here in support of the family in this, in this reality that entrepreneurs need more than just one or two places in Atlanta to grow. So I say all that to say, let's talk about the Russell Center and what we're doing. The answer is we're just getting started and we're not finished. Uh, when will we be finished? I don't know that the Russell Center will ever be finished. But let me tell you what we've come to find out in the last 90, last 120 days. And that is we have four concentric circles that sort of sit on top of each other, smaller to larger. The small one is getting this building right. Uh, not just opening the doors and making it an office building, but literally beginning to think through what verticals we can help in the entrepreneurial space be amazingly successful. There are 30 co-working spaces in the city of Atlanta. Some are great, some are not so great, some look like the other co-working spaces. We have an opportunity with the family being able to sort of start from scratch to design something that is very supportive and helpful. So we've had 35 lunches over at Pasco for entrepreneurs, and we've heard everything from there is no space in Atlanta to do usability testing. I, I create an app and I send it out to the world and I hope somebody gives me feedback. I'd really like to sit behind a uh, frosted glass or like Law and & Order and watch people actually use my app in real time. Uh, there's no place in Atlanta where I can go in and check in and check out 50 mobile cell phones to actually test my application on. All of those types of things are coming to us as real clear signals that we can do something very different. The Russell Center is not just for tech entrepreneurs, it's for entrepreneurs of all type. So we have a 5,000 square foot shed that I didn't take you into um, that people have asked, can we actually think about doing light manufacturing? Can we train people how to manufacture hair care products, for example? And so all of those things are on the table. We've had people suggest we create farmers markets in our huge parking lot that we have in the back. So all of those things are open. Our mission is in the first circle to get that, get the building right, okay, make it right. The next circle deals with the Russell famous campus. So 30 acres is a lot of land, first of all. 30 acres on the north side drive is a lot of land. So as we talk about having people who are thinking about having incubators uh, in the space, it's convenient they happen to own the hotel across the street. We actually have space for you. If we wanted to have a long-term internship program, we actually sort of have apartments that we can actually lease them. Uh, one of the biggest things for startups is having parking. Well, they got lots of space for parking lots. So we're beginning to look at not only the building, but the campus as valuable for entrepreneurs. Does that make any sense? And if you expand to their other businesses, they own Concessions International, one of the largest food vendors in the airport. If you have a food business, it'd be great if you could possibly, not guaranteeing it, test your product in front of real customers. They have to own a construction business. They're working on a number of projects in Atlanta, including the Waterworks, but also they're working on the National African American Museum for the Smithsonian in Washington. If you have a product that would go into a museum, it'd be great to be able to have that conversation. We met a young lady who's producing hand soaps, amazing hand soaps, and one of the questions we asked, 
the hotel management is, do you guys buy soap? Like, well, yeah. So could we actually look at buying her soap? For entrepreneurs, often getting to the starting line is the beginning. You really need your first big customer. So we think we can leverage this campus and their broader businesses to help with that as well. The third circle really revolves the district. So it is valuable to have the building right and the 30 acres of the Russell right, but with Friendship Baptist, with the Cross Family building on Peter Street, with the stadium going up, it makes more sense to figure out entrepreneurially can we get agreement that this district might be the place that when you land in Atlanta as an entrepreneur, this is the place you want to hang out. This is the place to be. And so we're actively working on that with a number of partners to see if we can help influence that as well. And last but not least, our goal is to document all this and put it on a wiki or a website or a book or something so in 30 or 40 years when people look back and say, I want to do the same thing, there's a place for them to go and not have to reinvent the wheel. Does that make any sense? Yes. So those are the four things we've been focused on for the last 120 days, including moving Kip in and planning out the rest of the build out. So we've been a little busy. But that's sort of the, the big idea for us right now. Make sense? So the last thing I want to share with you before I tell you where the food is, is to really think, of, think about the verticals that we've looked at. Uh, some of you, you all are in the room. We've talked to a number of people about sports tech. You guys know what that is? You know what Fitbit is? It's the guy in Georgia Tech who kicked the soccer ball, and the soccer ball is a robot and it rolls back to you to save you time and practice. Lots of drones, shirts that wick off sweat, all those things. We think between the Falcons and the soccer and Atlanta University and all their sports teams, uh, some of the high school and elementary teams over here, we think there's an opportunity for entrepreneurs to plug in that ecosystem. We're looking at health, beauty, and wellness. So everything from hand soaps to hair care, and really even how do you bring STEM into that and get people excited about that at a young age to get involved in that business. Uh, we've also looked at food as a vertical. Again, the Russell's happen on Concessions International, but uh, they have other relationships that are related to food. And as we think about stadiums coming online and many Atlantic stations showing up, there'll be lots of restaurants and food needs in this area. Uh, and last but not least, we've looked at urban development, so urban planning, housing construction, innovation in that area. Um, and we think we have a lot of interest in the city of Atlanta, particularly in West Atlanta, and making sure the West Side is well represented in that area. So those are four verticals we're looking at very closely and we'll probably start with, but that doesn't mean other verticals aren't welcome. But what has to happen for that vertical to happen is you have to have what we call a build team. Not just one person raising their hand, but three or four people coming together saying, we really think this is important, and we'd like to see how the center can support you in that. And as you walk through the building and saw these sort of zones, we may actually zone off a part of the building to be dedicated to that space. Does that make sense? So we're looking for feedback and interest, and that's what the next part of the meeting will be. In what, in what ways can we help you? In what ways can we lift up entrepreneurs, not only on the west side of town, but nationally and internationally? Make sense? Good, okay, now I'll tell you where the food is. So there's this wall. Meetings where we ask both entrepreneurship service providers to come and talk about what they see the gaps are in the ecosystem and how we want potentially to come together and leverage so that um, as, as a collaborative we can try to be more innovative and do some things together. We've also invited community residents and we've invited entrepreneurs. So um, it's really important for us in this project to get your input and your voice, and so really, really pleased that you're here. We appreciate you taking the time. The other thing I'll say is that if you haven't already signed in when you came in the front door, um, please do so or, or give me a business card with your email because we want to send out a follow-up survey to you, and we want you to have a chance to if you think of something additional or something that you'd like to say, um, in the survey that you don't feel comfortable saying in this venue, that you'll let us know. And if you want to follow up even beyond that with a conversation, um, please let us know that too, because we really do want to get your input and your feedback. Okay? So please sign up or give us your contact information so we can follow up with you. Okay. I'm um, just curious, show of hands, how many entrepreneurs in the room? Wow. A lot. <laughs> Um, how many entrepreneurship service providers providing services to business? Okay, great. Investors? Okay, great. Um, public sector? Okay. Other? <laughs> Do I miss them? NGOs? <laughs> okay, so it's great to have such a um, a diverse set of stakeholders here um, because you you all bring something unique to the table. So I really just want this to be your time. Um, if you have recommendations, if you have 
questions. Um, if you have something to offer, if you think that um, you might have partners or partnerships that you can offer to the Russell Innovation Center and to this work on the west side, I'd love to capture that. And um, we're going to make this part of our data collection that we're using to help us formulate our strategies. So anyone want to begin? I'd like to know. Yes. Um, where the uh, community-based organizations would kind of fit in the entire ecosystem and uh, what potential services uh, might be available to them and how they uh, kind of fit in the total scheme. Great question. So, uh, if you don't mind, I'll stay and speak. So, for the Russell Center, we talk a lot about that. So, um, I'll give you a little inside baseball. So, uh, it's not inexpensive to take a building that sits on the north side drive and sort of I'm going to use a word I probably should give it away to the community, right? Um, so we are thinking about a number of ways to generate revenue to make the center sustainable. So one consideration is there will be clearly co-working space here where small businesses can come in, hot desks, dedicated desks, small offices. There will be a reasonable fee for people to do that. We're also thinking about renting out spaces here like this large conference room, which I didn't show you, for Nonprofits who provide services or service providers who want to have a weekend hackathon or financial training. Um, there also is an opportunity to provide services to the people within the building and within the district, and so we see that as a platform as well. So everything from photocopying to mailboxes to legal services to website graphic design to somebody printing business cards. I mean, all those things are needed. So uh, I don't know exactly which service provider fits where, but we do see a place. In this building, in particular, where service providers can be can have access to the, the entrepreneurs in here. Okay. Anybody else? Um, a need, a challenge, a barrier, a gap, a resource to offer? Question. Yes. Hi, I'm Louise. What's my state? Fulton County. Going to be opening a community court in this area right here, Vine City in the family. And you know, when you think about urban development and urban planning and reviving this community, I think they would very much like to be involved. We work uh, with them and they're looking at those community partnerships. So, can you describe what it is a community court? You said, mm -hmm. What is that? How do I find a quick way to describe it? Community court is about changing the way that the criminal justice system interacts with the community mm -hmm. to build up the community instead of tear it down. Okay. And it involves the community in what kind, in what meaning of justice is in that community. Um, they actually go to court in the community? They build a court in the community. The proposed location, uh, as of right now, is Antioch Baptist Church. And they um, view themselves as being a resource in the community where people can find help. So they, they connect people with community services. And it's, it's about making the community a safer place to live by providing assistance rather than just enforcement. Court in church? They are they are going to be located in the Bill. church campus. Um, I, I, so I, I, I don't want to take over the, the meeting, but I'd like to make that introduction to the district attorney's office. Okay, thank you very much. Beverly. As you talked about manufacturing in Chicago, a high school uh, for technology is doing manufacturing on the south side. Um, I think that's a way to engage high school students into the entrepreneur pattern even before. And so I hope that this is an opportunity to look at some best practices that's already out there. And because uh, my thing is to start the entrepreneur at a younger level. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's a model that's out there. And it took a while to get it up and running, so that would be good. Thank you. Sorry. Um, first, first, yes. 
So uh, we are looking at a wonderful mural in that review, and uh, let me just say that I'm the executive director of the National Black House Festival. My name is Grace Stanislaus. So I, of course, would be very interested in ensuring that arts and culture uh, is, is a key vertical and or a key part of what is offered to everyone within this footprint. Uh, so we are very interested in participating at that level and bringing our assets to the table as that vertical, let's say, is added to or built into the flat, the master plan. Yeah, no, I'd, like to, I'd like to say one other thing, and you and I have talked a little bit about this. I mean, I would really appreciate your perspective that entrepreneurs need art. Mm -hmm. right? I hadn't really thought about that. They have to have a website, you have to have a logo, you have to have an aesthetic. That's right. right? And so, if you'd like to talk just a minute more about your vision of that, or if entrepreneurs have questions around that, I think it's a good, it's worth a minute of conversation. Yeah, well, I appreciate that. Um, so, we have presented uh, to everyone, well, to the Russell family, a proposal that we could be a cultural proponent. Uh, what we're saying is that arts and culture, um, and it's not just aesthetics, it's just art making and creative place making, needs to be a part of it. There is a rich opportunity, obviously, to engage our young people in the local communities here. And if this kind of generated out of a youth program that we started in the school, one of the local middle schools, called a Move Dance, and it intersects the creative arts with the health and wellness of the kids. And we want to be able to replicate that. We want to add value to the creative and artistic experience and actually be able to support and help the community in very direct and immediate ways. So we're talking about what I've said is that it would be wonderful that we have curators of culture in this cultural, and we create a cultural corridor, and that we, all, we do offer, it, when we talk about entrepreneurship, we have artists who also, um, as a vocation, art is a vocation, and there are lots of different ways that those who aspire to be artists can be given the opportunity and experience to learn how to be artists, to do the business of being an artist in the marketplace. So we are looking for that um, opportunity to be able to introduce the business side, uh, the creative art making side, and the place making uh, side of, of creative place making opportunities. So murals within the community, uh, opportunities within this hub for those who are here to be um, inspired artistically, to make things, to have access to artists while they're working and creating new things in this space. So I appreciate that. And in that, we also talked about teaching artists e-commerce, right? Exactly. I mean, they have to understand modern ways to make money a living. Brother Bay, you mind raising your hand in the back? I don't know if many of you in the community may recognize that this brother has a business on Peter Street, and he's probably one of the most prolific modern artists in our community. I was walking with my daughters down Peter Street, and they're like, oh, I recognize this art. It's in the salon where I get my hair done. I was like, you're, you're everywhere. But this guy has, how many uh, uh, Instagram followers did you have in your first batch? I'm making all the brushes, but I have three followers. Many, many thousands. Come up just a little bit. Many thousands of followers. And I'm trying to figure out, this guy didn't have an office. He's on the court. He's paying. How did he get 40, 50,000 people? Instagram, so now, and I lost them. Somehow my password was messed up, so I started over again, and now I have 10,000, right? So I think not only is it an opportunity to help educate artists on the, on the business of art, but apparently he knows something about Instagram that most business owners don't know. And so that collaboration, that, that intersection could be very valuable, I think. And uh, I don't mean to embarrass you, but you know, it's somebody to know, to know it. So maybe y'all should have a conversation as well. Yes. Sorry. I just want to make sure she gets in. Yes. Go ahead. Um, there needs to be a fund for startups and small businesses. Um, and so I'm an entrepreneur. Um, I have a company called Texturize, and we're a hair technology startup. So we've created technology to recommend products to women based on their hair type and texture. Um, we focus on women of color. And in my fundraising experiences, a lot of investors didn't understand our market which made our time to raise a lot longer than your average tech startup, which means we had to go through other creative routes of funding our business. So if you want to serve this area of, of action Americans, a lot of them are going to be creating ideas and businesses that a lot of typical investors don't have the knowledge or, or um, background to understand the value of what they're creating. So I believe there should be a fund that um, support startups at seed stage as well as growth stage. Um, I was fortunate to go through a program called Flashpoint, which 
provided our initial seed capital to start our business. And one of my investors, Mike Ross, is also in the room who has funded our company as well. But getting individuals like that, high net worth individuals who can put money together to create a fund and fund these businesses is going to be a key differentiator for successful entrepreneurs. And if you look at our city, Atlanta, comparing to other cities, one reason why we're falling behind is because we don't have those connected resources that are helping fund these companies at the pace that other 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 networks and ecosystems are. Um, yeah, amen. I, I, I worked on this for Detroit Entrepreneurs of Color, and the fund is set up specifically for them, and um, it has made a big difference. Kelly, I wanted to. Uh, Coupled with what? What's your name, please? Candice. Candice said, um, and then going back to CCI, having the pitch. Maybe if you think about um, some businesses, just don't know how to pitch their business model. But if we determine if there's a predetermined pool of businesses that would qualify for funding, maybe it could be so simple as your name is picked this month. Um, so that there wouldn't be you you I could be a great entrepreneur but I don't know how to deliver this message to you so if the funding is developed then make it an easy method for it to be obtained mm -hmm. yeah one way to do that is through pitch competitions so a lot of a lot of entrepreneurs can be coached through the pitch competition um, and that could open the door to perhaps um, apply to different funds or things like that. So there could be different levels of funding. One could be pitch competitions, one could be a seed fund, one could be like a growth stage fund. But I agree that that support for cultivating um, entrepreneurs as well um, is definitely a key part of it. So before I get to Ryan, can I just ask you how you define the ranges of funding that you feel are missing for companies like yourself? Yeah, so seed stage is typically around 500000 to a $1 million in seed funding. So now these are tech-based. No, I was just going to say these that's not. <laughs> 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 these are technology-based technology companies, so there could definitely be different categories. Yeah. But we have schools like Georgia Tech. I mean, there's no reason why the talent is here. It's just that the funding is not here. No, that's what, so, that's what I wanted you to clarify because people say seed and they, there's a lot of definitions, right? It's 15 to 35, it's you know, 35 to 150, so right. that's very helpful. And then there's another, another concept um, that's called like a revolving loan where the amounts are smaller, let's say 10,000 to 50,000 to 100,000 where you take out that loan for a period of time and you know you pay back the loan um, after a given time frame with interest. So that loan now goes back into the fund, so the fund is growing based off of the businesses being able to do that. So there are different methods and different like levels. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. So I want to echo what Candace said, but with a caveat that you can't, have, money is the key. So money fuses everything, money fuses the whole ecosystem, but I think you got to be prepared and ready to receive the money. So, you know, no matter what vertical is created, I think there still needs to be space and a organized uh, program for entrepreneurs to who want, who not in any, any of your verticals go through a program to be quote unquote certified, investor certified. You know, understanding what you know the terms and conditions are, things like that, because you can't invest in a company, you pick a name out of hat. I mean, I, that that's not realistic. That don't work. And so, if an investor knows that you're ready, uh, you have a proven track record, you've been through some type of certification, uh, that gives them comfort. And so, we want to mitigate the risk by having the entrepreneurs understand what it takes to get there, and, and tell the stories, the good, bad, and the ugly. And so, I echo what everybody said. But you know, I invest in myself and my own company and other companies. And it's just not done by relationships or on a whim. Great, thank you. <laughs> yes. Gil. I want to pick up on that. Gil Frank is like West Side Gardens. There is two levels of entrepreneurship we are talking here. One is a real entrepreneur. He wants to have his own business, he wants to go forward, he will get the money. That's a bootstrap system. 
But many of the people we are talking about, they just want to be independent. They don't want, want to have a boss. And the economy doesn't give them an opportunity. So that's what we see, the share economy and all this, you know, the gig. The yes magazine had an old uh, issue this month about the gig industry. But I want to pick up on what you are saying. Our experience is to try to help people to grow food in their home, but the goal is to bring them to a level that if somebody feels that he has gained the strength and the, and the skills and the habit and, and, and the introduction, he can decide to be an entrepreneur. So we have people, I'm sorry to say, we have some of the people here that are doing that, and yesterday they opened uh, their own market of farmer's market without to have to go to the whole system of farmer's market. So I want to offer to those who are interested, I did that the last time, to work as a network where everybody can begin to be, I call that entrepreneur, vendor entrepreneur, and to grow to the entrepreneurship by his own experience when he's supported. So I don't say a co-op, I say different form of collaboration where you feel supported by your peers, if you want, in your community. And because it's very frightening to come here and to say, I am an entrepreneur. So I would like to address that, and I'm, I'm ready to. And I have another team person with me that would be interested to do this wealth building, if you want. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Um, I think it's important you know, um, to classify. You know, I think throwing entrepreneurs in one bucket is, is very difficult and challenging. And so oftentimes, you know, when I think of entrepreneurs, I think of individuals who are self-starters, risk takers, and they need service providers. And so oftentimes, you know, um, what I found starting businesses is that I get a lot of pitching as an entrepreneur from service providers. But what I really need is other entrepreneurs who can strategize with me and help accelerate what I'm doing. And so I think categorizing the entrepreneurs, like the, the young lady with the hair product, you know, I don't think she has a challenge with a pitch. I think she just needs a, a roadmap to accelerate her vision. And so if, she can, if that roadmap can be established and then accelerate her process through something like the center, I think it can go a very long way. So one of the things that we talked about, you know, we, we talked about the mural behind this. One of the things we talked about is dedicating a wall to an ecosystem to help people know where they are in the process and where they fit into the ecosystem. Because you're right, to walk in the door and say, I'm here, how y'all doing? You know, it's, just, it's not really uh, clarifying what the next step is. And so it's a thought, and we'd love feedback on that and how that works. And maybe I wouldn't want to be a vendor. I really don't want to be an entrepreneur. I want to have a, a full-time job and on weekends I do X, Y, and Z, right? I think this is why Uber and other you know, businesses like that are doing well because they give you an option in. Some people may want to be entrepreneurs and want to be the next Bill Gates. And so it would help us to know how to help them and people can sort of self-identify. And so I'd love feedback on that as well. Yeah, so I mean, what I captured, I think what you said is that one size doesn't fit all when you use the word entrepreneur, so <coughs> categorizing those. And then within those networks, peer and peer mentors can provide you with some acceleration. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, great point. And a personal, personal touch to that, sitting down and really getting to know what the person needs an individual touch to it. So like an entrepreneur in residence type of program? Which is your qualifying the mentors. And that's just you know, being the mentor if they want to be one. Right. I don't know. Does everyone know what entrepreneurs in residence is? Yes. No. 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 So you, would you mind explaining it? Yeah, sure. It's it's pretty much like an in-house mentor. Um, and typically that person has a specific specialty in an industry or with specific type of companies. So let's say you worked in this building, you would get assigned to an EIR, an entrepreneur in residence, and you meet with them weekly or monthly. And their, their main mission is to help you with whatever goals or challenges that you're facing in your business. Right, and I mean, I'll just add that the federal government pays for EIRs and corporations pay for EIRs because they want small businesses in their supply chain and EIRs is one way to get them there quicker. So I think Beverly and then Kelly. When you were talking about the best map, I know that it's been torn around uh, CFI, but however, 
what has been successful while you wait on longer term investments to be put together is economic CDCs that are membership based. Okay, so say for instance you have different membership levels that would create seed funding. And so um, that's an opportunity, first of all, that you believe in yourself, but also it's an investment opportunity for others outside that can create immediate. And so I'm, I'm ask, clarify your question. So you're saying corporations would what I'm saying members is or individual members? What you all can create yourselves is what you call an economic community development corporation, membership okay. based, okay. where you set the membership level and every year you have to renew that membership. It creates the seed funding to begin to have some funding that you want to uh, create a base for entrepreneur. It's also an opportunity for others outside the community that have an interest that may want to invest in that seed funding. That's great. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Um, so I think she, maybe she, she did have her hand. Okay, go ahead and then Kelly. I just wanted to throw out the um, idea of potentially consolidating some core back office functions for startups because that seems to be a place for a lot of them mm -hmm. people. And so what, what functions do you see people looking help with the most? Well, I'm pretty new to Atlanta. I'm with Invest Atlanta, but I'm pretty new to Atlanta. But from what I see, probably like payroll and a lot of the common HR functions, maybe even taxes, and that could even be a startup opportunity for one service provider to, to do that for everyone else. That was sort of my thinking too, was that I was thinking of uh, more of a common administrative person. I don't need an administrative person 40 hours a week and I don't know how that would work either, but I do need assistance some a few hours a week and so I wish I had the same person that I could go to all the time that already already knows me and knows what I'm doing and then they can just do whatever I need done very quickly. That's your question. So would you like to pay for that pay as you go or would you be expecting that to be part of a membership? I would be willing to do either one because I would need it. It's a, it's, it's, it's a need. It's not a want. It's a need. And it's something that I need on a continuous basis. So however it works best, I would be willing to contribute. Yes. Yeah. I think the other uh, thing to think about is advocacy. Um, we've, got, we've got entrepreneurs that have startups that raise funds. Then we have small business owners that have lifestyle-based businesses or so they plug into the ecosystem. They have food-based businesses. Um, they struggle with uh, regulation, permitting, <laughs> Um, those types of things, and so I think it'd be great to aggregate all the business owners so that they would be sort of, a, even if it's a political action committee, a local PAC that could advocate on behalf of the small business owners and get them open and uh, allow them to deal with some of these issues that would require more than one business. Okay, great. I think here and I'll go back there. I have more of a question because when I listened to what you were saying, James, in the beginning about the kind of concentric circles about how this works, you have the Innovation Center, which is this physical structure. Um, and my question really is kind of an extension of his is that are we talking about this center growing technology companies and specifically honing in on a particular sector? Um, maybe within technology, or are we talking about a broader, because these are two very, very different things. Yeah. When you're talking about entrepreneurs who are in the community and who have maybe hyper-local businesses and local businesses, what they need is very different, and what Candace pointed out too, just you know, growth right. stage, and there are all these different types of funding that are needed, and there are different types of education that are needed, and there are different types of services that are needed. Right. What is, I mean, is there already a, goal for this, or are we talking about um, sort of like anchoring this in a larger sector that can actually provide um, a base for an innovation sort of district in a sense that is able to generate large amounts of returns for the investors who are investing in those businesses that then cycles out into the other concentric circles 
Okay, great. So I'll try to answer. Those are like four or five questions. <laughs> so I think I think the first answer is this is a platform. So the Russell family themselves. I mean, it's been said that you know they'll be incubated there. I don't think today the Russell family is planning to start their own flashpoint. This is a space where if somebody wants to start a flashpoint, or flashpoint wants to have a west side location, we'll try to accommodate them. So that's why service providers are valuable. There are people in the room who do financial literacy education. There are people who help women in particular create their first business plan to go get money to get a startup. So those people, those that programming will be welcome in the building. Will it be something that the family writes a check for? I'm not sure. But will we partner with them maybe to write grants? Absolutely. So we wanna we wanna be clear that we're helping all entrepreneurs, both tech and non-tech. Now, that said, um, we are down the street from Georgia Tech and right around the corner from Atlanta University, and tech is on the rage. So there will probably be lots of technology entrepreneurs that come in and out of this building and probably will co-locate. If somebody is in the business of baking bread and they need a factory, it won't be in this building, right? Uh, we've had you know, conversations with lots of different people. We call it credit unions. Who, is there a drive-through? Like, that, that, that's probably not going to be in this building. Primarily because we only have 30,000 square feet left, right? I mean, we're trying to accomplish a lot in a small amount of space. That said, that's answer number one. That said, knowing the family has a campus, it's common for a small business to grow to be a big business. So will you grow from being in a small space at the Russell Center to needing 5,000 square feet? The family may be able to help accommodate that, or somebody in the district may be able to help accommodate that. We want to keep the entrepreneurs on the west side of town, right? And if somebody becomes an H.J. Russell and ends up having an office building, we would love for them to build a small facility or building here. That's point number one. Point number two is, in the district, there are already partners who are talking about building things similar to this. So Friendship is mentioned. They're looking at a food incubator, like a kitchen, where you can literally go cook. And so our first conversation with them was, well, if you have a kitchen, we don't need to make a kitchen like you're across the street. Like, you have the kitchen, you come use our classrooms. And so that's where the district part comes in. Like, in 30,000 square feet, there's only so much we can do, you know? So we're having lots of conversations around how the Russell Center for Innovation Entrepreneurship isn't just a place, but eventually it's like Georgia Tech, right? I mean, like Georgia Tech in one building, it's like, it sprawls. And so is there a vision long-term, this is the third answer, that the Russell Center has a program in Nigeria helping people do that? Maybe, I might be dead at that time, but like, you know, in the future it may be. So. I want to be clear, I don't think the family's goal is to have everything be in this building, but this is a starting platform where people can come in and invent these new opportunities, and let's scale it and grow it as we can, and leverage the relationships and the resources that they have as best we can. Is that helpful? Well, I got one in the back, I'll come back to you. Okay. So I don't know if my question is more about the Russell or West Side, and I, I, I'm kind of confused because with those of us, and I see a lot of us that are in business in this area and have been in business for a long time, um, I guess for me, what I would want more than anything is to have a centralized, maybe, board that talks about things that are happening on the west side and how we could bid or provide goods and services for um, those things. And I'm kind of going through a little bit of confusion here on um, if that is the appropriate thing to be talking about at this moment. I think so. So I would, I would say absolutely. And whether you're a startup or, or a, you know existing wholesale business like yourself, um, having anchors like corporations that are willing to commit to spending on the west side is probably one of the best ways that, that you're going to get flourishing in this region. So, but I think specifically what I'm speaking on is a lot of us get our jobs through the bid process. Mm -hmm. okay. And so is there going to be or could it possibly be a centralized maybe, you know, with all of the development that's going on with the new stadium and different things, how do we get to see how we can provide services, you know, west side businesses, um, yeah. So I think I think that's a great suggestion. I'm, I captured it. Uh, you want to speak to it? Yeah, first? I wanted to just because I think it's a good point because it, it speaks to um, where we're at in the whole strategic planning process. Because to me, that's one of the that could be a key strategy that we can say. Well, we need to think through how we centralize that to make it easier for DBEs to be able to bid 
on stuff. Because, for example, and you guys can talk to this, at the stadium, we have a whole process that's very, it's all laid out very clearly for folks to come in and be able to bid on different kinds of opportunities. So it's all centralized and very straightforward. How do we aggregate and kind of centralize things and do that for business owners here to be able to tap into whether it's stuff at the stadium, and this is, I think, one of the things Linda was alluding to with the whole anchor strat and you know, institutions, how do we start being able to make procurement opportunities at Georgia Tech, at AUC, at the stadium, at World Congress Center, available to folks here? So that, to me, would be a great recommendation mm -hmm. that we should yeah. put there for consideration as we think about someone needs to do that. We should figure out how to make, whether it's at the Innovation Center or not, is a separate question, but we as a collective, as a collaborative, need to do that. Yeah, thank you. And I think, uh, yeah, yeah. Jerome, let me just say, well, good, good afternoon. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, good, good afternoon, everybody. I'm Jerome Russell. Um, I'm part of the family that's, of course, founded this and um, is standing this up, working with James and Frank and Linda and many of you in here, I know. Um, that question um, is a very interesting question. So what we're, you know, we've been in this building uh, for 60 years. This is where our, really we incubated H.J. Russell and company incubated out of this building and we expanded over the years. And um, as we look at the Russell Center for Innovation and Entrepreneurship, there are really three things we're trying to do. One is entrepreneurship. We want to aggregate, we want to build, we want entrepreneurs to be able to flourish and we, have, we want to have a place where entrepreneurs can come and find the resources and the salary to flourish. We also want to address, uh, you know, one of the things that personally concerns me in the city, in this city, and, and this is going across the United States, is a big disparity of wealth, okay? And I feel that the way we can control uh, our, that is by uh, controlling our own destiny, okay? So that's why we're big proponents of entrepreneurship. So we want this center to be about you know, changing the economic um, um, empowerment, community empowerment, et cetera. And the third thing to kind of address the lady, I couldn't see her who asked the question about procurement opportunities. We want it to be a place of <coughs> thought leadership and educational um, uh, 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 a facility where we, we are flourishing those types of activities. So, you know, we'll have a speaker. If there's a lot of stuff going on at the airport, we know we our relationships are our strength. So we know all the people here in this city. We know people nationally, and we want to bring them in, and we want to spread that knowledge and that, that information out to all. So those are really the three pillars we're building on, and I want to thank everybody for coming here today, giving us your feedback, because this is very helpful. And I know James gave a tour. I missed a tour, but uh, oh, just thank you. Just keep, let's keep it going. Great. Thank you. So oh, sure. uh, man in standing up in blue. <coughs> I think first and foremost, I want to thank the Russell family for doing this. Um, this is, it would have been super easy, super, super easy to just sell the building or do something very Russell family specific, right, and keep it moving. Um, I think it takes a lot of innovation. I think it takes a lot of, of, of vision to really come up with um, a space and to provide a space for people to be able to grow their communities. Um, so I, I do want to say thank you for that. It needs to be recognized that that, is, that's a, that means something. Right? It means a lot to really open up your space for the community. Um, the other side of that coin is I would caution the Innovation Center to uh, not be too many things to all people, to not try to be all things to all people. Um, the west side, southwest Atlanta, has a lot of challenges, tremendous amounts of challenges. Um, some of those challenges are almost third world challenges. Um, and so I know uh, from personal experience what it, what it can mean to try and be all things to all people, and that can be very challenging. So I would caution the center to really stay very focused, and I agree, James, using it's not that much space, um, and really reaching out to the broader community um, on how in a sense, the you know, like a rock in a, in a pool, the ripple starts here, but right, it, it can move out. Um, specifically, I did want to also add that I think that, however, this the entrepreneurial center and this innovation center kind of goes down. One of the things that I, I 
I've seen, heard people kind of poking at, but I just want to be more specific about it, was industry-specific um, information for entrepreneurs. Um, I spend a lot of time in the hospitality industry, um, and there is a tremendous amount of lack of knowledge around basic stuff. Um, how do you even do, deal with your food cost? Um, basic stuff around graphic design work, right? <clears throat> Does it really make sense to have your cousin Pookie do it for 50 bucks, <laughs> right? It's important to spend time on your branding um, and to really understand where design plays into this. Uh, my sister and I spend a tremendous amount of time talking about design, and design is something that's very, very, very massively lacking in communities of color. Um, we don't place a lot of emphasis on design because design is really expensive as an upfront cost but we don't really understand that it actually, the ROI on it um, is exponential. And so really looking at ways in which, I don't know anything about tech, so then that's a very specific, hospitality is very specific, and really providing a space for people to get um, real information that will allow their businesses to flourish. And lastly, I'll just say, also very quickly, is also something that I learned in starting, you know, starting our business is that one thing that entrepreneurs we never ever talk about, except when we go home and we drink, is um, all the personal stuff that is related to being an entrepreneur, right? It's very, we all know we can come in a building and type and we got to deal with the lights and the financing and whatnot, but really having a space for entrepreneurs to be able to talk about, when you start a business and you're married, you need to sit down with your spouse and look at her and look at him or however that works and say, we're about to be broke for two years, right? I'm not going to be. I'm not going to. I'm not coming home for three weeks at a time. Um, you have to look at your kids, right, and let them know. Like, by the way, I'm missing all your soccer games this year because Saturday is the day that we do X for the business. Um, and so, um, there's a lot of psychology that goes into being an entrepreneur. It's very, very stressful. Uh, it can really tax your personal relationships. My sister and I. Um, we did very much tax ours, and we came out stronger on the other end. The Russells, you know, I know y'all are a family. Um, and that, what does it mean to personally be an entrepreneur? Uh, and a space for entrepreneurs to be able to get information. I don't care if you have a psychologist on staff, or whatever the case is. <laughs> um, but um, those kind of personal uh, things are going to be. Art therapy. <laughs> 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 The artist right here, guys. Yeah, ready. Thank you. What's happening? Every, everything in real estate here. Uh, thank you. Uh, other okay. side. Um, kind of lost track, but let's go here. Um, I was thinking, and I think to the gentleman's point, when you look at communities, entrepreneurship is like the cornerstone of your community. Mm -hmm. So I think if we looked at it more of a movement, not as a place, but a movement. Like if we reach out to the communities, if we bring them in, what would you like to see? It doesn't have to be a grand scale. We don't have to have luxurious malls in neighborhoods. Some of them just want a clean corner store where they can get healthy groceries. So I think if we were to address specifically the community's needs, um, and then place those entrepreneurs in place, like in some of these abandoned buildings, helping them with the real estate, but based on what the community really needs. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, uh, to piggyback off of that, you know, and, and who owns the movement? Is it the ecosystem? And does the Russell Center, is it just a part of the ecosystem? And I think, you know, when I was hearing a lot of the conversation in the last five or 10 minutes, I think distinguishing the difference between the ecosystem and the Russell Center, I think, is very important and to, to really clarify expectations from the ecosystem, which is the movement, which includes all of us, and then what is the Russell Center? Hmm. Okay. Thank you. Um, we're in Bellevue. I'm having a Park. I live in my city. I attend a lot of meetings such as this, where it's constantly like community engagement. And then after you guys get all of our inputs, it's like we don't get to see like the progress of the project or like the end result. So where do you guys plan on putting this information once you guys sit down and collaborate and strategize or whatever and come up with ways where we can engage and we can um, participate or join the team or get employment? I'm a graphic designer. If you guys 
don't have a website or anything that will be displaying all of this, like how can we participate um, in the part of this? It's a great question. I think there's two answers. I'm going to let Frank uh, talk to the, speak mm -hmm. to kind of how you would participate in our broader plan, which is more focused on the ecosystem. Mm -hmm. And then I'll let somebody from the Russell Center speak to the Russells in particular. So, Frank? Okay, um, I can just go quickly for the broader collaborative plan to your point, making sure we follow up with folks. So, one of the things we will do and have been doing was, you know, because we have these collaboratives in some of the other issue areas like education or health. And so, once the plan is up, we've been putting it, we're starting to put it on our website in, in a couple different places, but also coming back to folks and presenting. Well, remember, we got this feedback here's the plan as we're going through with the collaborative members. Now a process where we're presenting high level goals and what are some of the strategies and saying, what do you think? Based on what we've heard, this is what we think should happen. Like some of the ideas that got presented today, does that make sense to you all or not? And then finalize the plan and then be able to share that with folks and have it somewhere it's easily accessible and then try to move it forward. And so what so the, we're, we're gonna end up putting in, I'm looking at Allison, she's, she's the one responsible for it. Really, probably on the website on the Rise website, which is where we've been talking about putting it. So the economic inclusion plan isn't done yet, but the health plan is done, the education plan has just gotten done, and that's where we're going to be putting a lot of this stuff that comes out of the collaboratives. Now, for the Russell Innovation Center specifically, I'll see. So, so it's a great question. So we have a, a slightly different process. We talk as we talked about downstairs. So we have a new website. It's R C I E R C I E Russell Center for Innovation Entrepreneurship dot org. If you go there at the very bottom of this little box, you can fill in and say, like, I want more information, or I want to schedule a tour. You can write a little paragraph or note. If you hit a submit, you'll go on our email list. And again, 100, remember, 120 days ago, this looked like sort of downstairs, so we're, we're still building. But on that list, as we move the current walls out and demolish the space and bring it to a white box level, we'll again be inviting people in to help us think through how we build out the space. That's probably the most active effort for us. And then going in the first quarter, make sure we'll let people come in and say, I really want to be in this space, and this is what I'm thinking. We'll start offering memberships. And the very beginning, it's going to be a limited number because the entire building will not be built out. So if you're really interested, let us know early. Um, and we'll be staging gracefully how many people actually enter the building and how we deal with parking and those kind of things. But for service providers, it's also a good time for you to say, I want to offer graphic design services. And we can figure out how we're going to list that. Also, for information, that the Blank Foundation shares with us, on the website we have a little news section, it's not really a blog, but we will be including news information there as well, so you can keep up with what's going on from our end as well. But we want you back in the building, we want you helping us figure out how to build this space over the next six months to a year. Great, and if you if you want to give me your contact information at the end of this, so we can plug you into um, some of the, you know, the groups that are meeting to talk about things, we'd love to do that. Um, in the back. Oh, you can hear like I had a response. Hi everyone. My name is Donna Matthews. Um, we are opening, Carl, myself, and uh, my husband is opening a cigar lounge on 301 Theater Street. And um, as a new mom, <laughs> um, I'm, I'm a new entrepreneur and a new mom. And these are some, like, you know, some of my challenges, like, you know, how do I appropriately come into these settings? So thank you all again for being very patient with me. Um, and to sort of answer a couple of different questions, because I think that's as as entrepreneurs, some of the things that have, we, Atlanta's have has a lot of access. Or you guys, we have a lot of access as young people, uh, as people of mi minorities, um, to a lot of different relationships. Like in this community alone, like our partner is um, owns a barbershop, one of the first barbershops down on in Castleberry Hill, um, and. It's a very, what's the word? It's, it's, it's not a very pretentious ground, but it's the most basic ground. It's like, the, it's like the epicenter for where people develop ideas and things of that nature and where they connect with people to see things that, you know, to fruition. And I think one of the things that we do lack is systems. You know, that's what we, while we have a lot of access and while we put together a lot of events and opportunity hubs, what we don't see next are those next steps. Like you you know, sort of clearly laid out, like, I'm interested in an opportunity, how do I get to point B, point C, and point D? Because we don't have those structures, those manuals, those, the information in place, like, okay, these are solutions that we continue, that we thought of. 
and this is how we like to sort of move forward. And what are your thoughts back on that? And that's how we sort of progress. Like, I don't think that oftentimes as entrepreneurs, as we face a lot of these challenges, like, we don't, we, we get discouraged and we don't see a lot of our ideas and our brands and our businesses to fruition. So one of the ideas that I'd like to propose is sort of just like a support system where, you know, just we need that constant encouragement. We need that constant like, you know, these are plans that we can do. This is another business owner facing the same challenges and there are solutions in place because that's something that we need to sort of see. We need to be able to, we're, you know, we have the vision, we have the dreams, we have the great ideas, but oftentimes the light at the end of the tunnel becomes very hard to see as we sort of face these challenges on our own as individuals. So like, you know, support center where we say like, these are success stories, like these are the same challenges where we share something like that, you know, on not necessarily like your news feed, but someplace like that, like, you know, where we share individual success stories, because that's what, that's sometimes the push that we need. Failures. Yeah, failures too. Yeah. <laughs> so, and celebrating your success. Thank you for that. That sounds like what the uh, gentleman in the blue suit was talking about, the, the personal and the psychology of it. So maybe like a, almost an entrepreneur boot camp where you come and these are the steps you might consider taking to entrepreneurship and then you also have the therapeutic side on the other end so that people understand the challenges. You don't want to, you want to make sure that people are encouraged because you don't want them to have a thought and just keep trying to plan that thought through instead of actually taking action. Okay, thank you. Um, let me go to someone I haven't heard from, Antoinette. Hi, my name is Antoinette, and I don't want to submit the market technology because we can collaborate online. We can kind of keep the conversation going. I have a site called Women of Contract, and we have people that post procurement opportunities. So a way for us to keep engaged, because I probably will not have the opportunity to talk to everybody in the room, but we can have this online site where we can go to. We may see opportunities. We may see the opportunity to partner, to collaborate. So maybe we can utilize technology as a way to keep connected and to keep the conversation going. So it could be an online site, it could be something like Facebook, website Facebook, I don't know how we call it, but I think that I don't want to submit the market technology and the opportunity to give our feedback and so forth. Thank you. And I think I said it at the last minute because I too have been coming to two years of meetings, I think somebody else has said that, and now it's time for action to totally keep the conversation going and to really make some things happen. Okay, sorry, here. This is kind of what I was going to say, like a centralized knowledge base um, so that we can avoid the same pitfalls. Like, we're, if we're a group of knowledge, then we can get further than just individuals. So, so I have a question for you, just processing what you're saying. I mean, how would y'all feel about a dedicated podcast? I think one of the challenges with writing is that to tell a life story and write it can, can be pretty dense versus having a regular situation where people can listen on a bus or car or train. Would that be helpful, do you think? Absolutely. Our blogs, like the video blogs. Video blogs. Mm -hmm. okay. And the Slack channel. Slack channel. Yeah. What is that? So Slack is like a communication tool for a lot of startups. Mm -hmm. So you can put a, many different channels on it. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the base system is free. And so um, we use it. Uh, I'm on it for a number of different other uh, things I'm participating in. But I see. Um, uh, RCIE Slack channel and uh, marketing, sales, finance, uh, community development, whatever. You can put as many channels as possible. And so, whatever information you need, uh, procurement and things like that, you put it on there. You become a member. You sign on in your email address. And so, when things like that come up, it comes straight to you. So, that alerts hey, there's a session, hour long session about procurement. Uh, it says such, such time, such, such place, uh, RSVP. And so, to me, talking about technology, we can't get away from technology. I mean, it's here to say, obviously, but we can utilize it much more and get deeper down. What everybody's saying is like, hey, let's not do surface stuff anymore. Let's dig deep down. And so, that's going to cause everybody to kind of reach out and get out of their comfort zone. And uh, it's nothing, not unlike text messaging, it's not unlike email, it's the same thing, but much more efficient. Slack. 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 Um, I'm going to hear from someone I haven't heard from, I'll go back to you, okay? Go ahead. Young man. No, uh, this, I, I apologize, I forgot the 
I always remember one sister, but not the other oh, twins. There's <laughs> free technology infrastructure, like an email marketing something, where people can send out newsletters, communication, and online things. So I think that you really build a strong technology infrastructure, so much to be in charge of that structure, to really make sure that we reach all these channels in terms of communication. So kind of a technology concierge that's sort of... Exactly. Plenty of charge for that, doing email marketing, maybe social media. Okay. Uh, technology is going to be the main hub as far as getting information out there and also connecting people to information and resources. Because we utilize email marketing for a lot of things we do. We send out newsletters on a regular basis. Uh, we post things. We do a blog. So I think that's really important to build that strong technology infrastructure of communication. And that's how only what we're going to deal with it right now. Put up videos about success stories. So, um, I'm going to call somebody out. Brian, director, uh, we have uh, a gentleman who's in the film industry here. And so, just thinking about that, I mean, uh, we've talked about bringing creative types in, producing <laughs> directors, filmmakers, um, you know, in, in talking with people or listening to people, it sounds like there could be a role where someone has a business here, but also provides a service. Maybe they, they're responsible for creating a weekly video, video uh, blog, or maybe there's a series, and uh, I, I just, since this is a listening session, we'll listen to you. Uh, is that reasonable, or are you guys so busy you don't even want to think about scheduling time or doing small series? Uh, not at all. I mean, I think a space like this is very open to exactly that, it's providing some level of service. You got graphic design, you got video, you know, uh, internet, and, and video, corporate video with a big, very big industry. Uh, and so spaces like that, or even streaming, or conversations, or podcasts that have video components are de definitely welcome. Uh, and I think it's something that could be used uh, in the spaces perfectly. Well, even just to build on that, it would be helpful to have, even if it's a small studio space that has the, you know, you need to raise money for it, raise money for it, but entrepreneurs need headshots, you know, corporate headshots, entrepreneurs need videos. And then that's a way that it's just sort of generate more income as well, because people could, I don't think any of this stuff should be free. I mean, some of it's services should be free, but when you're renting that space, it's just another way to generate income for the, the space. Yes. Okay, I think, go ahead. Okay, this is my <laughs> last comment, I'll find okay. um, Another thing is with entrepreneurs, there's limited resources. So maybe we can have like a barter system where we set up some kind of economic money system, but it's not real money. We exchange our services so that um, we can get the high-end services and not to this point get our cousin cookie. So it's like West Side, not Bitcoin, but it's West Side coin. Like right. 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 That's right. Instead of the Bitcoin. A couple minutes left. A couple minutes left. Just being respectful of your time. I don't know if these folks can stay over a few minutes, maybe cast one, but just want to make sure that um, we let those of you um, go that need to. So, any burning issues, questions? that you would like to raise. Yes. Good afternoon, my name is Rebecca. I'm a serial entrepreneur, mostly in the health and wellness space. So my question is, like you said, James, there's a lot of co-working spaces in Atlanta. Why shall I come here? You know, the next step out of my office in my house is build, building a team and office space. So why here? Like, what do you see as some competitive advantages to bring my technology and my team here. And I know you're still researching that and having these listening sessions to develop some of those, but, but why here? I can go a mile down the road and go to the gathering spot. So, so I'll, I'll answer that. I also want to go back to Alfonso's point of you know, being all things, all people. The answer we don't know, right? I mean, we're, we're trying to figure that out. Uh, and we think by having you here and other people like you here, that that's the reason you be here. Right, so uh, I was an early investor in a place called Sanby, and Sanby's tagline is, the best reason to get Sanby is because we're all here. Like, that's sort of the reason, right? So we want to create a certain level of gravity with our verticals. If we can get the top three sports tech companies in Atlanta to be here, and Nike walks in the door on a regular basis, that's a reason to be here. Uh, but outside of that, it's really about entrepreneurs and relationships, and just, just making it our place. 
So I think in the end, we'll be successful not because we sprinkled pixie dust or we paid people to be in here, but it's because we were we created a house where everybody could be successful and help one another. That's another key point. We're not going to be able to make you, by being here, you're not going to be guaranteed to raise a million dollars. But we can help you and put you next to people who might educate you and support you to the place where you on your own can go be better and greater. That's one point. The other point is this place is probably not going to be for everybody. All people mature, all businesses mature, all businesses should be growing. You should come here while you're small and then build a skyscraper across the street. And so that's another reality we have, which is uh, we have to be as best we can in the moment that we have people that are interested in being in this space. Uh, I'm a, how many Flashpoint graduates in the room? Right. And one big Flashpoint investor in the city. Um, you know, if you look at the Flashpoint wall, when you graduate from Flashpoint, everybody puts their logo on the wall. Merritt likes to say 90% are still in business, but probably half are no longer doing their startup. Thing. Half still are. And so you have to get comfortable with them. That doesn't mean they're not supporting you, they're not part of the ecosystem. But if we're going to be successful and help you be successful, it's really going to be around creating a gravity that's meaningful for people who want to be here. And my personal goal would be for people who literally land at the airport, like they don't go to the hotel first, they don't go to the club first, they come by the Russell Center in this area and say, I need to figure out what's going on. Because this, this is the place where you go to know what's really going on. And so I think that may be our, our hope and aspiration. But how we get there, we're going to need help figuring that out as well. A follow-up is, I'm kind of, I'm saying this from a selfish standpoint since I'm in health and wellness. So a lot of times as an entrepreneur, we don't focus on the health and wellness of our being. Um, we are working hours upon hours and a lot of co-working spaces in Atlanta, I don't see health and wellness programs for us. That's something that I think we should tackle. So, you know, creating a running club for us. Going to a spin class for us. That's also something. Um, I was going to joke and say, there's a parking lot I'm back in your running class. Spin would be better. There's no food, but spin would be better. But if you want to build businesses and have them thrive long, you know, we have to be healthy. And a lot of co-working spaces, a lot of these meetings, we don't talk about what are we eating, what are we doing. We are the business. We are our brand. And if we are not our best us, our brand is not there, the best. So I'm going to sit down, stop preaching. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you very much. We have one more, the time for one more comment question, and then we're going to um, officially close. The history of the place called for the west side, and that's why I believe it's very positive to happen. But will the people who are, want to become an entrepreneur have, when they are coming in this door, a commitment that what they produce will also bring other people who are not entrepreneurs to be not only the consumer of their product, but also the producer, the, the, the chain of value to be granted or rooted, I would say, to the population that we pretend to serve. That, that my uh, missing town. And I know the history of the place is supposed to secure it and guarantee it, but I think that in your uh, planning, it should be something more clear that when you come into that door, that's what we want it to happen. What is the outcome? The outcome is that many people in Vine City English Avenue can see that this is a place where they can hunker themselves to society in general and not just to be isolated. All right. So thank you very much for your time, attention, all of your input. Um, and as I said, please feel free to um, give us more through the survey process and or follow-up call. Um, I'm going to let Jerome have the last word. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Well, first of all, thank thank everyone for coming. Um, we're extremely excited about this opportunity. For me, uh, I'm involved in a lot of different things. We have you know, real estate, we have airport concessions, but this is the most exciting thing I'm working on right now. So I just want to let you know that uh, I appreciate all the feedback, um, and we're going to continue to uh, to continue to try to make the Russell Center for Innovation and Entrepreneur Place that's going to really make a difference for generations. So 
um, just hang in there with us, give us feedback, um, and we're going to make it happen. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.